I improved my return of serve. I'm returning better than I ever have. But before I tell you how I did it, let me give you a little backstory on what happened to my game overall and to my return of serve. So I used to play the circuit here in Florida. I played a lot of tournaments. And while I was teaching, I kept my game pretty sharp. Then I had a bad knee injury and I was scared to play. And this is where I stopped competing. However, in 2018, when I started my YouTube channel, I did start playing a little bit more tennis. And the first time I played a full match was against my buddy Felipe from Brazil. And that match, I played pretty decent, but my return was a little bit shaky. And then I took a long break and played another match against my buddy Reed. And at this match, I realized that my return of serve was horrendous. It was so bad that at one point I had to back up all the way Rafa style close to the fence in order to get the ball back and play. I just had no timing. My return was an absolute disaster. All right, it's all right, do feet. There's no footwork on that return. One thing I find with not playing a lot of matches, which I don't, I rarely play now, you lose the timing on the return, so. And after that match, I took another long break and this is going back maybe four months ago. I played a match against my buddy Milan. I played decent. Again, I was a little bit out of shape, but what I noticed about my game that my return of serve was horrible. I just couldn't time it right. I was framing tons of returns. I had no control and no confidence. So I made a conscious effort to implement some of the fundamental teaching methods that I was teaching to others into my own return game. But not only that, I started doing a tremendous amount of research on the return, studying the greatest returners of all time, which in my opinion are Roger Federer, Novak Djokovic, and Andre Agassi. And I started discovering several things that they do on the return that I wasn't doing. And understanding what to do and actually doing it are two completely different things. So I understood that the deficiencies that I had needed to be corrected, but that means absolutely nothing. I had to get the reps in. So what I started doing was practice my return of serve a ton. I wasn't worried about serving at all. I would come out for an hour or an hour and a half and only return the serve. Of course, I was playing sets as well, but it was important to do this without the context of match play because a lot of times when you do a match play, you kind of revert back to your old habits. So I did play a lot of matches, but I also did a lot of reps, meaning that I was playing points without keeping score and I was just working on the technical aspects of my return. And guys, one of the reasons why I love tennis is that no matter how old you are, there's always time left to improve your game. And I didn't think it would be possible to improve something in my game, but here I am 45 years old and I'm returning better than I ever have. And guys, I'm going to let you in on one of the things that I changed on my return. I'm not going to go through the entire list because another thing that I did in this time was complete the intuitive tennis teaching methodology. See, before I went on YouTube in 2018, I had the intuitive tennis methodology already completed. So I decided to present this methodology in video format, not only on YouTube, but I also wanted to make a course on every single shot. So I have the intuitive forehand, I have the intuitive one-handed and two-handed backhand, I have the intuitive one-handed backhand slice, I have the intuitive volley, the intuitive serve, and intuitive tennis footwork. The only piece of the puzzle that was missing was the intuitive return of serve. I'm the type of person that likes to walk to walk and not just talk to talk. I didn't wanna put this return course out while returning horribly. I needed to improve my own return in order to teach it to you guys. So in any case, I'm gonna give you one of the things that I changed on my return 
And if you're interested in finding out every single fundamental element of the return of serve, whether we're talking about returning first serves or second serves, I want you to check out the pinned comment and you can take a look at my brand new course. So here's the thing that I changed on my return. And it was a completely mental adjustment. What happened was that my intention was wrong on the return, which means that in some of those matches where my confidence was low, I was so worried about getting the return back in play. And what happens when you're worried about getting any ball in tennis back in play, but especially the return, is that you start steering the ball, you start being very careful and you're not committing to your shot. Now remember, you don't have all the muscle memory built up in a shot that's steered. Your muscle memory is built up for your full stroke. So those shots that you're trying to get in so badly, your intention is to get the ball into the court at all costs the exact opposite is going to happen you're going to miss even more and this is what was happening to me so my intention was to get the ball back in play and i was missing one return after the other so i understood that there are intuitive elements on the return of serve that are going to happen by themselves without me having to do anything and let me explain that in a little more detail i told myself to commit on every return and the commitment was to take a full cut at the return now within that within the full cut there are variations so you could go for an outright winner you can place the ball in a certain direction but one thing that has to be done on the return there has to be a commitment to fully hit the ball and the one thing that i stopped doing is predetermining emergency situations so i completely stop intending to chip the ball back in play to bunt it back in play or to block it back in play i finally understood that those things are going to happen completely by themselves my intention had to be to take a full cut at the return and let the chip the block and the bunt come out by themselves And that's exactly what started happening on my return. My intention was correct. I was intending to take a cut on every return. Now remember, taking a cut doesn't mean ripping his Nick Kyrgios style when he doesn't care whether the ball is going in or not. Within the rip, there are several adjustments that you can make. Like I already said, directional control is something that's very important. So those are all decisions that you have to make prior to your return starting. It's gonna depend on your overall confidence level. It's gonna depend on the score line. But the important change that I made is now I intended to hit every return, which did several things to the way my body was moving. With the intention of having to hit the return, my body was also moving a lot faster. I wasn't intending to just shovel the ball back in play because naturally, when you shovel the ball back in play, your body is gonna move a lot slower. So what ended up happening wasn't the fact that I was able to rip every single return, not by any means. I was still chipping the ball back at certain times, blocking it back or even bunting it back. But those things were happening completely on their own. Oh. And guys, that was one of the biggest changes that I made to my return and the result was spectacular. I was not only making more returns back in play, but also my confidence started to grow. And with that, I was able to be more aggressive and pick more risky locations and increase my swing speed even more.